Today we're looking at the best settings for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign that has just dropped in early access for all pre-orders. It is a campaign, so we can afford to lose a bit of FPS to keep some of that eye candy, make it as immersive as possible. We're starting off in the display area with display mode. You've got two options here you can pick from, full screen borderless and full screen exclusive are the ones you should be picking between. You definitely don't want to use a windowed mode. In theory, full screen exclusive should be the best option. It should give you the lowest input latency, but in this game, I'm really seeing the borderless, especially for the campaign, uh, still works just as fine. It does allow you a bit quicker alt tabbing if you want to quickly check something over on another monitor as well. So honestly, pick your poison, exclusive for better latency, borderless for more flexibility. Display monitor and adapter just need to be set to the correct monitor and GPU. This should be done by default. Screen refresh rate and display resolution. If you've got borderless selected, you won't be able to set these. If you do, however, have full screen exclusive set, just make sure that these are set to the correct refresh rate of your monitor, as well as the resolution of your monitor. For me, I'm sticking with borderless full screen, so it sets these by default. Then aspect ratio, once again, you should be able to set this to automatic. For most people, that's going to be a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But if you are playing on a uh, wide screen or ultra wide monitor, then you will need to have one of these ones selected. It should cover it off on automatic. If you see any weird aspect ratio issues, you can change it in here. For VSync, make sure it's set to off. Yes, it does help with screen tearing, especially on some of the lower refresh rate monitors, but it adds a hell of a lot of input latency to your game turning this on. So I'd highly recommend avoiding it. For your custom frame rate limit, I would recommend you leave this at custom and then click show more. You can put your gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to the max. Just max it out, get the max you can out of the campaign uh, so you're not limiting yourself in any way. But then for the menu, you can leave this at something like 120 is what I've got it set at. This just keeps your menu running nice and smooth, but not maxing out your system when you're sat in a menu. There's just no reason to be doing that. And then the out of focus custom frame rate limit, I leave this at 30. This means that if I do alt tab out the game to do something else over here, my system system can calm down a little bit because it's actually only rendering the game at 30 FPS rather than the 300 or 120 it would do if I didn't have this set. If you do get any hitching or stuttering or weird loading of textures inside of the campaign, come here and restart the shaders preloading. When you do click this, you'll get that shader install uh, thing that opens up in the top left. Just wait for that to complete back to 100% and that can help alleviate some of those issues if your shaders have corrupted. Yeah, you can do that here. For your display gamma, if you're on a monitor, so playing on PC most of the time, then you wanna have this set to 2.2 sRGB. However, if you do have yourself linked up to a TV, you might find that the overall gamma is better running with 2.4. So pick whichever one suits your setup. For your brightness, it's going to be personal preference, but I'd recommend that you ignore the guidelines here, especially this barely visible one. If I was to follow this with my eyes, I would have it somewhere around... 48. However, you should always go from that value and add on about six or seven. It really helps brighten up certain really dark areas of the game where you might just not spot enemies, even in the campaign. And it overall just increases the visibility. So for me, going from 48, I would probably come up to somewhere around 55 as a very nice brightness for the game. Constrain mouse to game window. Because I'm playing on boardless full screen, you can actually see that my mouse does go off the screen so if i wanted to i could turn this on and then when i apply i can no longer get my mouse off the screen this can be helpful if you happen to see your mouse going off screen i haven't seen any problems in game running this on or off so for simplicity when i'm in the menus i do keep this off focus mode you can leave this off for sure then nvidia reflex low latency you either want this set to on or on plus boost. The choice of which one you pick is dependent on your GPU and CPU setup. If you think you've got a much stronger GPU in your system than a CPU, you need to select on plus boost. However, if your CPU and your GPU are very close to each other, or even maybe your CPU is stronger than your GPU, then you wanna set this to on. In my example, I've got very, very similar power in both of my components, so I find that on is the best bet. The last setting in the display area is high dynamic range or HDR. I'll be honest, I haven't played around with this too much to do any testing of it. I always recommend keeping this off for multiplayer, but for the campaign, if you have a good HDR monitor or TV, feel free to turn this on and experiment with it and see if it looks good for you. 
Currently, I haven't really got my settings dialed in to allow for good high dynamic range visuals. So I leave it off and that's what I would recommend if you just wanna go in and keep it as simple as possible. Moving on to the quality tab, the graphic preset, you can just leave it at whatever. It will change itself automatically as we move down the list. Render resolution, leave this at 100. We can use upscaling and sharpening in just a sec to cover any problems we have in terms of needing to gain FPS back. We do not want to lower our render resolution. Dynamic resolution, kind of in a similar vein to render resolution, you do not need to turn this on. What this would do by turning it on is it would try and maintain a specific FPS value by constantly varying the resolution in different bits of the game. So a really intense scenario would drop the resolution down. Uh, I just don't recommend this in general. It makes the game's resolution go all over the place and you can only really use this if you know exactly what you're doing. I, I would not recommend it. For your upscaling and sharpening, there's actually three different options that I will recommend to you based on how strong your hardware is and actually what hardware you've got in your system. So the first scenario is where you've got nice, strong hardware that is running the game really nicely and you just want to make the game look even better. For this, you need to select Fidelity FX Cast. This is just a sharpening method that makes the game look that little bit more crisp overall. It just really sharpens up the game really nicely. I like running 75 cast strength. I feel like anything else is a bit too overly sharp, but it is personal preference. So play around with this value and see what you like the most. Then, if you're in a scenario where actually you're struggling with FPS, then I would recommend that you either run NVIDIA DLSS or AMD FSR 2.1. These are both upscaling methods which will actually gain you a nice amount of FPS for very little degradation to quality. Uh, DLSS is only available to NVIDIA users, whilst AMD FSR 2.1 is available to NVIDIA and AMD users. So even though this one says AMD, it's available for everyone. It's open source. When you select these, I would recommend you then click show more uh, and you can bring the sharpness to whatever value looks best to you, but just make sure your preset is at the highest quality setting. For DLSS, that's quality. Whereas for FSR 2.1, it is ultra quality. So just select the highest quality setting should gain you a few FPS and help the game run a bit better whilst keeping the game looking pretty much just as good as it did running at native resolution. Moving on to VRAM scale target, I haven't had enough time to really delve into how this affects the game. I'm going to wait until multiplayer comes out to delve into how this can really affect performance hitching. It turned out in Modern Warfare 2 that turning this down actually helped with hitching and stuttering. However, because we're focused on the campaign here, and the tiny bits of performance gain aren't gonna mean too much. I would just recommend leaving this at the default value for now. Don't play around with it just yet until we've done a bit more testing for it. Variable rate shading, I'd recommend most people turn off for the campaign, purely because it says it's a low visual cost to improve performance, but we really don't need to be taking into account any visual cost when we're playing the campaign. We want it to look nice, and this is a setting that really won't gain us much performance that we care about in a campaign. For your texture resolution, it's very simple. I want you to put this to the highest value, look at your estimated VRAM usage and just check that you haven't maxed out to the target. As long as you're below that, you can jack this texture resolution right up and make your game look incredible. If you do find that you've gone over the target down here, just lower this value one by one until you come back under that target value. Texture filter anisotropic, you can keep this maxed out. I even recommend you max this out for multiplayer because it has no effect on performance and it just really improves how textures look overall. So it's a golden setting to keep on high. Depth of field is kind of personal preference. In multiplayer, I say definitely keep it off, but in campaign, campaign, you might think it makes the game look a bit more cinematic. It doesn't affect performance really, so it's completely personal preference. I'd say keep it off. Detail quality level, once again, I would leave this on high. It has very little effect on performance, especially in the campaign, and you want to be as immersed as possible. You don't want bits of bushes disappearing, so keep it on high. For particle resolution, I wouldn't recommend maxing this out. There's a lot of explosions and fire that happen naturally within the campaign levels, and that can degrade performance quite substantially, and that depends on this particle resolution. Honestly, 
low particle resolution still looks very good for all of those kind of quick explosions and fire that's going off around you. So low would be my recommendation here. Bullet impacts, I like to leave these on because they look cool, to be honest. They don't have any effect on performance, but once again, adds to the immersion that you gain from the campaign. And then for persistent effects, I would also recommend you leave these on for the campaign. This is kind of similar to bullet impacts, except this is to do with uh, explosions and fire that are going off and the marks that it leaves on surfaces when they happen. Once again, it all adds to immersion. It does have a bit more effect on performance, so you can turn this off if you want to gain a little bit of performance back but I just love the immersion you get from keeping this on. For shader quality, you either want to put this on low or medium. Medium will look a ton better. You start getting way more realistic lighting, a little bit of reflection quality in there as well, but it does come at the cost of FPS. So if you have a decent enough system to do it, put this up to medium. However, if you do need to gain some FPS back when you do your kind of benchmarking, you play through your first couple of levels, bring this down to low. It will help your performance out a lot. On-demand texture streaming, definitely keep this off. We don't need to download high quality textures and this kind of stuff and download it to 32 gigabyte of your hard drive. It's not necessary. Don't bother with it. Keep it off. And then for your local texture streaming quality, just leave this at normal. Shadow quality, I wouldn't put this anywhere higher than normal. I just don't actually see any visual difference going up from high to ultra. It almost looks like the shadows just move location a little bit, but don't look any better. And it does cost more performance. I think normal is the best quality shadows you get. Uh, if you do need to gain a little bit of FPS, coming down to low does gain you some nice FPS without making the shadows look terrible. I would never recommend using very low shadows. They look absolutely horrendous and you should only select this if you are running on a potato, unfortunately. So I'm going to keep this at normal. Screen space shadows, you can put these on high. They don't have too much of an effect on performance, especially when it comes to the campaign. And it just adds some more realistic level of shadows to the gun that you're holding. So you don't feel that disconnect between your character and the gun and the actual area you're in. Once again, adds to that immersion. Perfect for the campaign. For ambient occlusion, I just recommend you keep this off. Having it turned on does give you some more immersive shadows, especially when you've got these objects that are very close to each other these dark areas, but you really don't notice it with the pace that you're running through the campaign at. It's such a small detail and ambient occlusion also does affect performance quite a substantial amount for how little it seems like it's doing. So I'd recommend you keep that one off. Screen space reflections, uh, I would actually recommend you turn these on to normal. Having nice reflections is very immersive as you run around the levels in the campaign. So it's really nice to have these on. For static reflection quality, however, you can just leave this at low. It has a decent amount of effect on VRAM and you're really not gaining much from turning it up to high, as you can see here. You're not gonna be sitting, standing, looking in a mirror at any point in the game. So it's just not worth it. The last bit of the quality tab begins with tessellation. For the campaign, I'd recommend you turn this on to near. This is gonna add some of this uh, tessellation. So you can see how the ground on the left here is just this flat, unrealistic bit of floor. But over here, it actually looks a bit more realistic, a bit more immersive, which is really nice for the campaign. And you don't really need to go to all, you just need the bits that are near to you, uh, the bits which you can actually see in more detail where tessellation is being applied to. Terrain memory, just leave this on max. I've tested between min, medium and max, and I really don't see much of a difference in the campaign levels. So I just leave it on the max value, maybe in multiplayer or in war zone. We will see more variation as we go between these values. Volumetric quality, I hate to say it, but I'm still gonna recommend you keep this on low. Volumetric quality, volumetric fog, light leaks, all this kind of stuff is so costly on your system. It does make the game look a bit cooler, but it's unnecessary, even in a campaign. So I'd recommend you keep these on low. You're not turning them off, they're still there, but you're saving as much FPS as possible. Deferred physics quality, which is all to do with the quality of the water. I would put this on low. There's a decent amount of water in the game and making it look a bit better is nice for the campaign. So low physics quality. Weather grid volumes, the quality of weather effects applied to dynamic objects. There's a decent amount of rainy bits in this game. And I recommend putting this on low just to add a little bit more immersion to the game. Last thing, water quality. 
I would put this to water caustics and wave wetness. Once again, make the water look nice, add to the immersion of the game. It all adds to just how nice the campaign feels as you play it. The last tab is the view area. We've got the field of view, which is a bit of personal preference. I would recommend you play it at least 110. That's just me coming from roots of playing other FPS games and wanting as much information on screen as possible. I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice playing anywhere below 100 because you're just missing out on so much of the visual amazingness that is on your screen. So honestly, if you haven't gone up to 110 or even 120 yet, please do it. You will not regret it. ADS field of view. It's going to be personal preference in the campaign. I think affected looks better because you don't have as much of that kind of visual recoil and the view doesn't zoom in as much every time you ADS. It kind of stays a bit more zoomed out while you're playing. It just feels a lot better. Weapon field of view and vehicle field of view. I'd recommend you put both of these on wide. It allows your gun to just be a little bit further from your person, covers up a bit less of your screen overall, and the vehicle field of view, it just means that you're not so zoomed in on the vehicle while you're driving around. You get to get a bit more view to your sides. World and weapon motion blur, turn both of these off. No one should be playing a game with motion blur on. It just looks horrible. You can't see what's going on. It doesn't look cinematic. Please turn it off. Same thing with film grain. I know the game can feel like a film, but it's not a film, so turn the grain off. First person camera movement, I like to keep this to least because I just don't like the game shaking my screen so much, even in the campaign. It's not immersive, it's annoying. Third person camera movement won't affect the campaign, but you may as well put it on least already just for any third person that you might play come the multiplayer release. And inverted flashbang for the campaign, I leave this off so we have the white flashbang. If you do find yourself getting headaches or you just don't like the white flashbang, you can put this on and instead get a black flashbang. I just think for the campaign and trying to be immersed, the white flashbang, it just has to be that one. So I leave it. This, I leave this off. And there you go, guys. That's all the settings you're going to need to dial in for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. What I'd recommend you do next is watch this video for the best NVIDIA control panel settings that are going to get your game running at just even more incredible levels of performance. So yeah, go and watch this one next.